God's grace and his peace to you from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. In our Old Testament reading for today, we hear about the call of Abram, or I will probably say for the rest of this message, Abraham. His name gets changed a little bit later on. And God makes a promise to Abraham. So let me pick this up in chapter 12 of Genesis, verse 7. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So he built there an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. This one verse says an awful lot. Please note what happens first. God called Abraham. So Abraham received a promise from God. The result of that promise changes Abraham. He now immediately builds an altar. Notice that God did not command the altar to be built, but Abraham does it anyway. Why? Well, it was probably the thing to do, but it's also a good teaching point. The altar serves the promise of God. And if you think of it that way, this is why as Christians we build churches with an altar present. Because the altar does serve the promise of God. Keep in mind that God did not give the promise to Abraham because Abraham would build the altar. No, the promise came first. There was nothing that Abraham did in order to earn merit or deserve a promise from God. We have a good gift giver of a God. And so God called Abraham out of the blue and gave him a promise. Abraham's response was to build the altar because of the promise that he received from God. And this is why we need to continue to maintain, you could say, the building and the altar that serves the promise. Unfortunately, in today's world, many people get this confused. There are many people wandering around in today's world that don't see the promises coming Uh, from the altar or even through the altar, and they think that Christianity is just some man-made religion that just continues to perpetuate itself for the sake of doing the same thing over and over again. But here at Peace Lutheran Church in Plainfield, we exist not to perpetuate a man-made religion, but we continue to put the focus on what Abraham received from God as pure gift that promise from God. As you can tell by our Old Testament reading for today, not all promises of God are fulfilled in our lifetime. It's easy to hear God make the promise to God that his descendants would inherit the land, but if you follow the reading from the Old Testament, who was already in the land? The Canaanites. And you might be thinking, okay, God, what are you doing here? You just got through promising Abraham this would be his land, but not yet. That's sort of like taking a Christmas present and instead of buying the gift, okay, and wrapping the gift, you cut out an advertisement for the gift. And you put it in an envelope and you say, here's your Christmas gift. One of these years you're going to receive it, but not today. It even gets better. Because if you continue that analogy, you're basically saying, I'm going to give this Christmas gift to you, but you can see what it is. Here's the picture of it. But you won't receive it. Your children won't receive it. Maybe your grandchildren or great-grandchildren will receive this gift. And you might be thinking, what kind of gift is this? But if you go back to that first gift that God gives, that first promise that God gave to Abraham, I'm sorry, gave to Adam and Eve about how a Messiah would come and defeat the great tempter. When was that ultimately fulfilled? Thousands of years later, Jesus would take on flesh and blood and be born of Mary. Did Adam and Eve get to see that promise fulfilled? The answer is not in their lifetime. Did Abraham get to see this promise of God fulfilled that he would inherit this land? And the answer again is no. 
it wasn't for him, but for his offspring after him. And by the way, after, if you think about it, Abraham didn't have any offspring at the moment that this promise was given. So welcome to the idea of a promise that God gives. And by the way, it takes faith to trust in these promises, knowing that it probably won't be fulfilled in our own lifetime. Because think of the promise we also have from God. We have a promise from God that he is going to come back again. He can come back at any moment. So he could fulfill this promise right now. He could also fulfill this promise in a month or two, or a year or two, or a century or two. It's according to God's time. But we still continue to hang on to the promise through faith which is also a gift from God because the promise is from God and we cherish this promise even though we may not necessarily see it fulfilled in our own lifetime. But because of that, it would not stop Abraham from doing what? The construction of the altar. Again, this is important because all the sacrifices what we would call during the Old Testament times, all those animal sacrifices that were done on the altar point us somewhere. They point us to the ultimate sacrifice of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ upon a cross. Christ didn't die upon an altar, but you could say upon a cross or when we get to our gospel reading for today, upon a pole. But I want you to consider for a moment what John the Baptist said of Jesus when he saw Jesus walking by in John chapter 1, verse 36. John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God. That Lamb of God is indeed that sacrificial Lamb, whose blood would be shed for the sins of the whole world, not upon an altar, as Jesus makes that comparison in our gospel reading for today when he was talking to Nicodemus in John chapter 3, verse 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so the Son of Man uh, must be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. You may remember in the Old Testament that Moses was instructed by God to construct a bronze serpent and put it on the pole because of the poisonous serpents that were biting the people, and the people were dying. But all who would look upon this bronze serpent, all who would trust in the promises of God, when they were bitten by the poisonous serpents, would be healed and restored to life. Jesus now takes that same event from the Old Testament and applies it to himself. Just as Christ was raised upon a pole, or you could say upon a cross, his death brought healing and life to all who were bitten by sin. And the bite of sin leads to eternal death and damnation. But all who trust in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ have the healing and life that Christ brings. Again, this is a promise of God. So we remember the altar. It's right smack in center for a reason. It is in a very prominent place. And when we look at our altar, what do we notice? We see the stone, but upon it, what? The Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world in the form of a crucifix, a cross with the body of Jesus hanging on it. Yes, the altar serves the promise to remind us of the precious gifts that God gives to us, but also notice what else is upon the altar. You may see the elements for the Lord's Supper, the bread, the wine, as when God's word and promise are connected to that bread and wine, it is the very body and blood of Christ. And so what occurs with that bread and wine? We receive Jesus himself, his body, his blood, given and shed for us for the forgiveness of sins. The Lord's Supper is a means by which we receive this promise of God. So as Christians, we continue to gather and use the altar. 
because it serves the promise of God. And it's a means through which we receive the many promises of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Unfortunately, we live in a day and age where you can actually find churches without an altar. A church that doesn't focus upon the promises of God. But this building, this altar, will continue to remind the people who gather about what God gave to Adam and Eve what God gave to Abraham, and what God gives to you, a promise. A promise that we're still waiting to be fulfilled. A promise for Jesus to come, return, and to take us to be with him in heaven above. Until that time, we continue to trust in the promises that he gives to us, his means of grace, the Lord's Supper, again, to strengthen our faith, to give us the forgiveness of sins and to keep us in that promise until it is ultimately fulfilled when Christ comes again. Yes, the altar does indeed continue to serve the many promises of God. In the holy name of Jesus, amen. Now the peace of God that surpasses all our understanding will continue to guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. <laughs>